In 2016, photos from the Miss Langata prison pageant were trending on social media platforms in Kenya. Kenyans expressed varied reactions online regarding the pageant, but what truly captured their interest was the pageant's winner, Ruth Kamande. Ladies and gentlemen, for Miss Langata 2016, contestant number five! Oh, oh my God. I was so surprised and shocked. I didn't know actually that I'm going to get this. And I thank God for it because of God's favor. Entranced by her beauty, netizens remained oblivious to the gruesome murder case that had led to her arrest. Ruth Wanjiro Kamande was born in 1994 and was brought up in Dandora. Not much is known about her early life, but in interviews, some of her friends gave some insight into her personality. She came from humble beginnings and was struggling to make ends meet. She had a few odd jobs as a hairdresser and briefly worked as a sales agent in a telecommunications company. According to friends and former colleagues, Ruth had a penchant for the finer things in life. Despite her humble upbringing, she harbored a strong desire for material possessions. She was obsessed with looks, and as a result, she would constantly beg her friends for suits to wear to work. In 2015, she had another obsession, her 24-year-old boyfriend, Farid Mohamed Halim. Farid's upbringing was rough. He and his sister's childhood was filled with domestic violence. After their mother passed away, things became even more difficult for the siblings. However, through it all, Farid excelled in his education. He passed his KCPE exam and was admitted to Lenana High School. He then joined the University of Nairobi, where he studied computer science. Shortly after graduating, he was employed as a data analyst and quickly rose through the ranks to become a supervisor. It's unclear how they met, but Farid and Ruth's relationship was described as toxic and one-sided. According to Farid's sister, Sarah Waidera, she first met Ruth when she showed up to her workplace and introduced herself as Farid's girlfriend. Sarah expressed surprise, noting that Ruth had showed up alone and was insisting that she was her brother's girlfriend. A few months later, Ruth reached out to Sarah again for a girl-to-girl -girl conversation about Farid. Ruth confessed that she realized her love for him was unreciprocated and wanted to address it. She mentioned plans to travel to Lebanon to work as a housemaid to distance herself from Farid so that she could forget about him. However, Sarah encouraged her to stay. Ruth agreed to remain in Kenya, promising to focus on finding a better job and moving on from Farid. But Ruth did not move on. Despite pursuing other relationships, she continued to seek out Farid. According to Farid's uncle, Edward Gatonye, Farid confided in him about the relationship, expressing his reluctance while Ruth persisted. Despite Farid's attempt to distance himself by relocating to a new residence, Ruth persisted in tracking him down. Farid allegedly said that Ruth couldn't be stopped and that she refused to leave his apartment. Farid's uncle, Edward, had invited the couple to his house, but when they failed to show up, he had to go look for Farid personally at his house, only to find Ruth there. He inquired why Farid's phone was off, to which he explained that Ruth had blocked certain numbers on his phone. Farid also told his uncle that Ruth was upset because she had found old high school letters from women in his house. Ruth openly displayed hostility towards Edward when he attempted to intervene in the disagreement. Edward, who had only recently met Ruth, found her behavior disturbing, especially when she isolated herself from them and locked herself in the bedroom. Apparently, Ruth only came out of the room at lunchtime to buy chips, which she only served herself and Farid, then locked herself up in the bedroom again. Farid had previously complained to his uncle about Ruth's insistence on staying with him against his wishes. On September 20, 2015, a day after Uncle Edward's visit, Farid's neighbors in Nairobi's Buruburu estate had commotion followed by Farid's piercing screams for help. 
His landlord, Duga Gatumo, said that it was around 8.45 a.m. when he heard Farid crying out for help in Swahili, saying, Nisaidie, nisaidie, amenidunga, which translates to help, help, she has stabbed me. Neighbors tried to get into his house, but the door was locked from the inside. Eventually, one neighbor managed to break a window. Inside, they witnessed a distressing scene. Farid was in pain and covered in blood from stab wounds, while Ruth stood in front of him, holding a knife. Despite their efforts, neighbors were unable to open the door and pleaded with Ruth to open it, but she refused. Tragically, Farid stopped crying for help and started praying as he succumbed to his injuries. Ruth reluctantly opened the door when the police arrived. Police officer Joseph Otieno responded to the distress call and was confronted by a bloody scene. Farid lay lifeless, surrounded by evidence of a violent struggle. Bloodied walls, scattered beddings, shattered utensils, and a cell phone smashed to pieces. Ruth was also bleeding, saying that she had been stabbed by Farid and needed immediate medical attention. She told police that Farid had sexually assaulted her the night before and infected her with HIV. She was arrested and taken to hospital for treatment. Ruth Kamande was charged with murder. At trial, she confessed to stabbing Farid, but insisted it was in self-defense. She claimed they had had an argument the night before when she found old high school letters from women in his house. The court heard that among the exhibits retrieved at the murder scene were love letters sent to the deceased from one of his alleged girlfriends in the U.S. She claimed the situation escalated when Farid confessed to previous affairs with two women whom he had abandoned after entering into a relationship with her. Ruth said that after demanding an explanation over the two love letters, Farid became angry and tore the letters up into pieces, trying to make her believe that the letters meant nothing to him. According to Ruth, Farid also insisted on having unprotected sex with her the night before the murder. She added that things took a turn for the worst in the morning of the murder when she stumbled upon a hospital card under a mattress which suggested that Farid was HIV positive and undergoing treatment. Ruth told the court that Farid tried to kill her after she discovered his status. She narrated how Farid snatched the treatment card from her and attacked her from behind as she was packing her clothes in the bedroom. Ruth said, quote, Farid told me that he would rather kill me and himself than have his status exposed. I stabbed him severally using a kitchen knife which fell on my chest from his hands as we were struggling on the ground. I overpowered him after putting my two thumbs in his eyes to save my life. She also revealed that during the struggle, he inflicted several injuries on her chest, stomach, fingers, hands, right thigh and abdomen before she overpowered him. Ruth said she stabbed Farid out of fear but tried to save him. She told the court that after stabbing him severally, she rushed to the kitchen to get some water to save his life after she realized that Farid was bleeding profusely. She added that she couldn't remember how many times she stabbed him since she was in a state of fear, panic, and shock to save his life. She said, quote, It pained me to know that the person who I loved and trusted so much was to ruin my life by infecting me with HIV and AIDS. She said investigating officers who rushed her to Metropolitan Hospital and later Kenyatta National Hospital, where she was given post-exposure prophylaxis to prevent HIV infection, saved her. However, the prosecution presented evidence, 15 witnesses, and medical reports that contradicted Ruth's version of events. Farid's landlord testified that Ruth locked the door from inside, preventing him from escaping as he cried for help. Despite attempts to break a window for access, Farid could not be reached by his neighbors. When police arrived, Ruth was found with blood on her clothes, claiming she was raped and stabbed by Farid. However, a police officer testified that Ruth's stomach wound was self-inflicted, suggesting an attempt to cover up the murder. Medical examinations also proved that Ruth had not been raped, as she had earlier alleged. The most compelling evidence against Ruth came from the post-mortem results, which revealed that Farid had been stabbed 25 times and that his wounds were not consistent with Ruth's allegation that Farid had pinned her down as they fought. 
noting that post-mortem examinations showed his injuries were inflicted in intervals and not by a person laying down. Post-mortem results also proved that Farid did not have HIV, as Ruth had earlier claimed. Prosecution concluded that Ruth had committed premeditated murder as they broke down the crime based on the evidence they had found. They deduced that after finding the old letters, Ruth locked the door before attacking and stabbing Farid from behind while he was working on his laptop and continued inflicting fatal wounds as she ignored his pleas for help, even when neighbors could witness the ordeal and begged her to unlock the door. Since her arrest in 2015, Ruth Kamande was being held at Langata Women's Prison for the duration of her trial. In 2016, while she was awaiting the conclusion of her trial, Ruth participated in the Miss Langata Prison pageant aimed at supporting the rehabilitation of female inmates. Competing against 19 contestants, she won the title of Miss Langata Prison 2016. She made headlines when her photos started trending on social media. The comments that she called in after the first photo was posted leaned on objectifying her looks. One Facebook user commented saying, quote, Oh my goodness, come and kill me too. With all the social media attention on her appearance, her crime was somehow forgotten until Justice Jesse Lesit found her guilty of murder in 2017. On December 13, 2017, Justice Jesse Lesit ruled that the prosecution had proved beyond reasonable doubt that Ruth Kamande had stabbed 24-year-old Farid Mohammed 25 times in dismissing Kamande's claims of self-defense due to the excessive number of stab wounds. On July 19, 2018, Ruth Kamande appeared in court for her sentencing. Her advocate pleaded for leniency, urging the court to hand her a lenient jail sentence, arguing that she had established a close relationship with God since being taken into custody in 2015. The advocate told the court that Ruth had converted to Islam while incarcerated and had since become religious, praying five times a day. She had also been attending a course in theology for the past one year. Her lawyer also highlighted her accomplishments, including earning five certificates and engaging in activities such as modeling, dancing, poetry, and script writing, culminating in her recognition as Miss Langata Prison in 2016. Her lawyer stressed that this achievement reflected her discipline, cooperation with authorities, and commitment to reform, qualities that were not easily attained. Ruth further stated that she was remorseful and regretted the incident. Her lawyer added that at the time of her arrest, Ruth Kamande, who was then 21 years old, had just been enrolled at the Jomo Kenyatta University to study business. Unfortunately, her plans were abruptly halted by the circumstances surrounding her arrest. The court heard that she comes from a family of a single mother who had educationally invested in her after her only brother had passed away, insinuating that a long sentence would not allow her to take care of her family. However, on their side, the prosecution argued that 24-year-old Farid Mohammed, whose life was tragically cut short, was an orphan and had the responsibility of supporting his other family members as well. They asserted that Ruth was arrogant and lacked remorse throughout the trial. The prosecution urged the judge to impose the death penalty. The events of the day were clear. Conversely, the accused person has not alleged that she acted out of any despair or anguish or bleakness or sadness or tragedy. I find that the accused person deliberately served the deceased with the clear intention to cause him pain, suffering and death and I've taken into account that she stabbed the accused person 25 times. I must however mention that it has not escaped my mind that the offense in this case was a gender-based violence. It was a violence against the deceased person by virtue of being a, a boyfriend to the accused just because of perceived frustration the accused had in the relationship. Justice Lesit dismissed claims that Ruth acted in self-defense, saying the stab wounds were not consistent with her allegations that her former boyfriend had pinned her down as they fought. The judge observed that the wounds were inflicted at intervals and not by a person in a lying position. Justice Lesit determined that Ruth was an unremorseful, cold-blooded killer after she ignored Farid's cries for help and deliberately blocked his exit from the house, even as neighbors gathered 
and urged her to stop and open the door. She said that Ruth had premeditated the stabbing. The judge accused Ruth of manipulative behavior, including inflicting minor stab wounds on herself and accessing the victim's mobile phone after he died. Justice Lesit ruled, saying, quote, The accused inflicted each stab, not in a frenzy, as she alleged in her defense, but deliberately and intermittently. Her action was calculated to inflict pain and cause death slowly but assuredly. This is clear proof of malice, of spite, callousness, and hatred. She stabbed the deceased 25 times, not in quick succession, but rather spaced it out, as if severing it in pleasure. She showed no remorse during proceedings, and she did not plead anger nor hurt while killing Farid. In my view, that discretion to pass a sentence other than death in capital offenses should, on, should, be, should only be exercised in the deserving cases. I do not find this a deserving case. I think to pass any other sentence than the one prescribed would turn the accused person to a hero. I want young people to know that it is not cool to kill your boyfriend or girlfriend, even where you feel disappointed or frustrated, don't do it. Instead, it is cool to walk away and thereafter to forgive. Ruth Wanjiro Kamande was sentenced to death for the murder of 24-year-old Farid Mohammed Halim. Ruth appealed her conviction, arguing that the evidence at the scene was tampered with and that the trial court exhibited bias against her. Her defense, led by Professor Gizo Muigai, criticized the prosecution's reliance on contradictory witness testimony. They also highlighted her young age her first-time offender status, and her willingness to plead guilty to manslaughter. However, the Court of Appeal upheld her death sentence, stating that the evidence overwhelmingly indicated her intention to kill. They emphasized the severity of the injuries inflicted by Ms. Kamande on the victim, which led to his death. In the ruling, the judges said, quote, there is no doubt Ruth Kamande inflicted the injuries that caused the death of Farid Mohammed. No doubt she inflicted over 20 stab wounds on Farid's chest, hands, legs, head, abdomen, back, and shoulders. Having carefully examined the evidence on record, we find Ruth Kamande violently, intentionally, and unlawfully killed the deceased. In 2018, Amnesty International asked that Ruth's sentence be commuted to life imprisonment. Kenya hasn't executed anyone since 1987, but death sentences are still issued. In 2023, Ruth Kamande was granted the opportunity to appeal her sentence at the Supreme Court. The family of the late Farid Mohammed expressed satisfaction with the judgment. Farid's aunt, Emma Wanjiko, said, quote, we are glad that this day came and his grandparents, his sister, were actually in court today when this verdict was given. Farid had just completed his IT course and had made an effort to work part-time to complete his education. He had just started his job when his life was cut short. We want to confirm to Kenyans that there is justice in our courts. After three years of waiting, our prayers have come to pass. We have finally found justice for Farid. We are Christians, but we, we just wanted to, to thank the court and the justice in Kenya. Now we believe that this justice in Kenya, that's the most important thing, that people cannot go killing others, taking other people's lives, just because one is uh, frustrated or is, you know, has no other choice. There's a choice of walking away and thinking over what you're about to do. Farid's sister, Sarah Waidera, who attended all the court sessions, expressed that the extensive focus on Ruth's beauty and charm overshadowed Farid's story and caused their family significant pain. However, upon reflection, she now acknowledges the importance of the widespread coverage the case received. May Farid's soul rest in peace. If you or anyone you know is experiencing gender-based violence, you could reach out to Usikimie. 
It's a Kenyan organization that helps victims and they offer support to everyone regardless of their gender, age, religion or sexual orientation. If you'd also like to help, you could donate to their cause and feel free to reach out to them on their social media pages. Also, if you know any other organization that is in your country, if you're not in Kenya, you could leave their contact information in the comments below, which might help someone. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I would like to hear your thoughts on this case. Feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. We are almost at a thousand subscribers. We are now at, currently as of this recording, 804 subscribers, which is very exciting. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking around and watching and interacting with my content. Um, I appreciate you. My name is Faith Njoroge and if you'd like to match the voice to a face, you could follow me on Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Faith Dublin Njoroge. Also, if you'd want, if there's a case you'd want me to talk about or to feature, uh, feel free to reach out and give me suggestions. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.